Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Kaiju Weekly, the weekly podcast that introduces you to the wide world of giant monster movies. I am your host, Travis, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Michael. Hello, Travis. <laughs> Michael, you sound a little different today. Yeah, it might have been from quarantine. I don't know. I just feel like a new person all of a sudden. <laughs> Michael has been reborn <laughs> into a new person. <laughs> uh, no, so, uh, yeah, because of Kaiju quarantine, Michael needed to take a break for a little bit. He was a little hungover <laughs> after all of that. So we have Elijah from Kaiju Conversations as a guest on here. Yes, it's an honor to be on your lovely podcast. Yeah, we're so glad to have you on. I'm I was uh really really desperate. I, well, I didn't sound <laughs> desperate in my messages, but I was like I was cuz I was like, "Oh, you know, it's no big deal. I'll just, you know, if we if we can't record, that's fine." But inside I'm like, you know, Princess Leia from from uh, Star Wars, <laughs> like like help me, Elijah One Kenobi. You're my only hope. <laughs> but I'm glad that you could join me and uh, help me out <laughs> this week. It'll so be fun. yeah, uh, so to let everyone know, this is going to be a different episode than what was planned. Um, we're going to pick back up with mech month next week, um, which will be the last episode of mech month. But uh, yeah, because of a very special event that happened over the weekend, we're just going to kind of just go through the news and talk about some stuff instead of uh, having a, a movie review. So it's a little bit different this week. And so to get us started on that, I'm going to uh, talk about the news. And I have a little sound effect that I put in now for the news. It's the <laughs> from, um, <laughs> from uh, King Ghidorah. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so first bit of news is... Over the weekend, we had Kaiju Quarantine 2 Trash Mountain. It was a three-day movie marathon that was organized by Rob from Tokyo Lives, the Tokyo Lives podcast, and was hosted by all of us podcasters, the Kaiju-related podcasters. Let's see, we had you, Elijah, from Kaiju Conversations. We had... Uh, Chris from Gargantu Cast. We had Monsters vs. Men. We had Giant Monsters BS. Uh, we had Michael from Kaiju Groupie. Uh, who am I forgetting? Uh, Nathan. Oh, Nathan, Monster <laughs> Island Film Vault, of course. Um, yeah, we had a lot of people involved in that, and it was. Oh, boy. <laughs> So I figure for the first bit of news, we can just recap the stuff that happened um, over the weekend and talk about it because it was a lot of fun. And uh, for anyone who was a part of it, we want to thank you for being there and joining us for uh, whether you joined us for just one of the movies or joined us for all of them. Um, if you missed it, then... I'm very sorry. You missed a lot of <laughs> a lot of great things. Uh, this was the second Kaiju Quarantine that we've organized, and uh, we're hopefully going to do more in the future. So uh, stay tuned. If you missed this last one, we we could we might be doing another one real soon. Um, so Elijah, I wanted to ask you, what were some highlights for you from the <laughs> weekend? <laughs> What were some of the highlights <laughs> from Trash Mountain <laughs> Kaiju Quarantine? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, it's like a awful flashback. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like oh <laughs> man, it's just all a blur. Um, okay, well, I tell you what, let's let's do it this way. Let's take let's let's go through the different movies that we that we went through. And let's let's talk about them because because uh, I think that would be fun. And then the people who were not involved um, or were not there can hear what movies we watched and just 
Oh, man. So we started off on Friday with Godzilla versus Megalon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget who hosted that one. Uh, I th- That was Nathan. Uh, Nathan, me, and Alex. Nathan, you, and Alex. Okay. So uh, Alex from uh, Monsters vs. Men. Um, and uh, that... <laughs> that spawned a that spawned a a video <laughs> made by you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, the I mean, I mean, we're we're a family friendly podcast, but I mean, that's it's not too far fetched. We Nathan pointed out that there there the uh, jet jaguar in there had a light on his crotch area <laughs> in his schematics. And then from then on, that's all anyone could talk about <laughs> through that entire thing was, uh, was jet Jaguar's crotch area. <laughs> and, and Oh boy. <laughs> was you that know- a highlight? <laughs> By the end of that movie, we were banned from saying anything about the monsters fighting. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh it <sighs> was something. It was something. Uh then we went into Gamera versus Guiron or Giron, which was uh Michael, Chris, and Matt from Giant Monster BS, Chris from Garganchicas. Um so I, that one is kind of a blur to me. Mm -hmm. like i don't remember much from that one i think and i'm I'm in the same boat as you i'm kind of that was a blur because it went by so fast Mm -hmm. uh oh that's whenever i made the jet video (laughs) oh yeah that's when you yeah you shared the jet video during that one that's right that's Um, right uh, but yeah, that one was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. The commentary was great on it. Uh, I do remember enjoying the commentary that the three of them provided. And mm-hmm. I, the copy that, uh, Rob used for Gamera versus Guiron was so crisp and clear. I had never seen, uh, that movie look as good as that. So that was a very, uh, neat experience. Mm-hmm. I think it was the Mill Creek Blu-ray, but Arrow probably will do ten times better, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, then we move into Saturday, and the first movie on Saturday, oh, boy, I was excited for this one. Uh, it was me, Chris from Cast, and Alex from Monsters vs. Men. Uh, we talked over Yeti, Giant of the 20th Century. That was fun. I that, love that. It was so fun. I love that movie. I love that movie so much. And it was so great. Um, Chris had seen it. I had seen it. Alex had never seen it. You had never seen it, Elijah. And you were in the chat. Mm-hmm. So what, what are your thoughts on that movie and that time? <laughs> I loved it. Um, you know, I... I had heard so much that I'm like, this is going to be unwatchable. <laughs> but when I watched it, I'm like, this is actually really good. I wish the print was in better shape because mm-hmm. it was hard to make stuff out. But I'm like, I love this movie. This is awesome. Why is yeah. why is this movie so obscure? It needs to be well known. Yeah, it should. It should be the most famous monster movie out there simply for the things that are in it i mean i mean let's not beat around the bush there's a giant inflatable yeti nipple (laughs) in it uh that is just so crazy and when it showed up and alex was like what am i watching (laughs) and then there's a scene where the Yeti strangles a man with his big toe. <laughs> and it's just like, why do, why do people not know about this movie? More people need to know about this movie. <laughs> yeah. 
so that was fun. <laughs> uh, now for the next one, Conga, I actually went and took a nap because I was exhausted after Yeti. So that was Rob from Tokyo Lives, Nathan from Monster Island Film Vault, and uh, Matt mm -hmm. from uh, Giant Monster BS. They did Conga. Mm -hmm. And from what I heard... It was not great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the movie, uh, not the not the commentary, but the movie, yeah. Oh yeah. See, I I'm kinda in the same boat as you. My computer like broke uh, for that. And I'm like, oh my god, I have D Wars tonight. And I just I kept trying to fix it and I had to restart the whole computer. Oh, uh, uh, okay. But I heard a little bit of it and it was it, it, some people thought Megalon's commentary jokes were a little edgy, but that was Congo was pretty up there too. Oh it was wow, quite funny! But <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah, I had to just take a nap. I was so <laughs> tired after that. Um, and then that that evening we had the Legend of Galgamath. Now this was oh. Oh, this was something. So this was Alex from Monsters vs. Men, Rob, and then did someone else join them on that? I think Michael did. Okay, yeah, Michael joined them uh, in on that one. Uh, so uh, just the weird flesh baby <laughs> Ninja Turtle looking thing that eats metal. And then at, at some point the it goes up to these knights because it's set in medieval times and it go the monster goes up to the knights that are wearing metal armor and it like motions to, to tell them to take off their armor but it looks like a strip tease and <laughs> it's just like what what is going on here <laughs> it's so great it was such a weird movie you know I, i'll admit the first third of the movie I thought was not that good. Um, it was kind of mm -hmm. hard to watch, but the last two thirds was a lot of fun. I, I really wish it had a DVD release now because I liked that ending. Yeah, the ending was really good. Uh, the The movie, uh, it's one of those movies that I think is definitely a lot more fun when you have somebody else to watch with you because mm – -hmm. I sitting by myself watching this, I could just imagine just n not really enjoying it, but seeing uh, or having the commentary from Alex and Rob and Michael that made it so much better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it made that movie so much better. It's just so great. Um, and then, yeah, and then uh, on Saturday night, the last one for the night on Saturday, we had D Wars, which was mine, Dragon Wars, uh, Kai, you know, uh, me from Kaiju Weekly, uh, Elijah, you were there, Kaiju Conversations, mm -hmm. and Eric from Monsters vs. Men, who is the uh, uh, self proclaimed film snob from that <laughs> podcast. And so I was desperate to have him watch this because i'm like it, you know he's a film snob people hate on this movie so bad i want to convert him <laughs> to loving this movie to prove that this movie is worth watching and i don't think i was successful <laughs> <laughs> and you know i i gave you a lot of crap for d wars not being as good as reptilian but it's a lot of fun i, yeah. I enjoyed it yeah, I, I, I mean, I plan on reviewing it. And I, well, I plan on reviewing Reptilian, too. I plan on reviewing it for the podcast, so I'm not going to get into too much detail. But I do really like that movie. I think that it gets more crap than it than it deserves. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't think it deserves as much hate as it got from Eric. <laughs> 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 Who rated it one star on letterboxd and i'm like dude after watching the last couple of films for the for the kaiju quarantine you need to go back and change that review because that like <laughs> some, oh man um 
so then we move into Sunday, and Sunday afternoon we had the Giant Claw, which was me, uh, Matt from Giant Monster BS, and Rob, mm -hmm. who did that one, and that one was a lot of fun. Um, do you have any thoughts on that one? It was a blur. Um, that that afternoon just kind of blurred because of that circle video. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, which yeah, which is coming up. We'll talk about that. Yeah, in between the movies, uh, Rob put together some B-roll, which was mostly um, weird commercials and other weird little videos to kind of fill in the time in between uh, each movie on the stream. And so yeah, we're we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the circles. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about it in just a second. Um, yeah, Giant Claw, uh, it was, it was fun. The commentary was great. I think we did a decent job with it. Um, but ultimately, uh, it's, it's going to be overshadowed by everything else that, you know, <laughs> that happened that day because we had so many other great things. Sunday definitely was the best day mm -hmm. because oh, yeah. we had Giant Claw. Then we moved into Crater Lake Monster which was Rob and you, Elijah, and uh, I, who else was on there? Uh, Nathan. 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 That's who it was. Uh, and so do you have any thoughts on Crater Lake Monster? Uh, the, the first time I watched it, I'm pretty sure I was a half asleep because I didn't notice how many day for night shots they tried to do but never did. It, they, it's a bunch. It was a bunch. That was so crazy. The movie constantly was there in the middle of the day with the sun shining down on them. And they're like, oh, wow, it's such a beautiful night. Look at all the stars. <laughs> it's just so great. And that just became a running joke. Like even later on in the movies uh, that we did later on that night, we were we were still talking about, oh, wow, look how beautiful the night is. <laughs> Just so great, uh, yeah. That was a that was a fun one because that just that movie is so crazy and dumb. And <laughs> mm -hmm. the two guys, I was in the chat, and just every time the two um, like redneck guys were on, I would just be like, you know, last time on on Duck Dynasty, <laughs> <laughs> last time on Swamp People, <laughs> just <laughs> oh man, so good. Uh, and then so we get into Sunday night. Uh. The, but before we get into that, <laughs> <laughs> as part of the B-roll that Rob did, uh, all the other podcasters left. So it was just me and you, Elijah. Yeah. And and then you know everybody <laughs> in the chat. You know, so we had other people watching with us, but we were the only ones who were commentating. <laughs> and there was this weird video that Rob included. It's like uh, a an instructional video on how to do computer graphics and animate things, but it was just this weird sphere that just kept turning inside out and reshaping itself and moving around. And then there was people talking, but the volume was so low that I couldn't understand what they were saying, so I just kept hearing voices in the background, and it just was like, and it just kept going. Uh, it kept going. The, it was like 15 minutes long. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny that we're recording together because we shared an experience. <laughs> oh, man. It, like trying to explain it to everybody when they finally came back on was like, <laughs> uh, you know, we just said, do you you know the scene from 2001 A Space Odyssey where where the just all of space and time is flying past him and he just morphs into the space baby? Like that's what happened to me and Elijah <laughs> <laughs> while watching this video. We became one with the universe and just morphed into giant space babies. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was oh man it was something it was just like it broke us it, yeah <laughs> it broke our spirits it broke our minds it broke everything <laughs> i went silent for like 35 minutes 
Yeah, you were <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, oh no, we killed, we killed Elijah. <laughs> it was so crazy, just so bizarre. Oh man. So yeah, that was a thing that happened. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then I, and I, it just, and it nearly killed me because <laughs> at the end of that video, I'm so transfixed on this video. I'm just watching this, this video about spheres and, and just, it's just moving in and out and shapes and, and, and weirdness and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, wow. And I'm just so transfixed on it. And then all of a sudden hard cut to Mystery Science Theater 3000, them singing the Gamera song, and it just, like, nearly gave me a heart attack. <laughs> like, my heart almost stopped, because I was like, what? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, that was, that was something that happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we move into... <laughs> The next movie on the list, which was Attack of the Super Monsters, which I was super excited for because we had Nathan from Monster Island Film Vault, we had Michael from Kaiju Weekly, and we had Eric, the film snob, <coughs> film snob, back again to talk about this movie, which is a combination of puppets, suitmation, anime, and terrible, terrible dub. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, after the you know the final film. I don't know if I can say a dub's bad anymore. That's true. That's true. <laughs> after we get to the final film, it's like yeah, no, no, no movie is bad anymore. It's just all movies are good. <laughs> we have to reevaluate our entire way of reviewing movies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was, but Attack of the Super Monsters was fun. My favorite part of that, because I was in the chat watching it, uh, was all the nicknames that they gave mm -hmm. each of the monsters. We had, uh, you had Steve, you had Eddie, you had um, just all of these Ash, and yeah, a bunch of different nicknames to all of the the monsters that showed up on there because it's like why why bother even learning their <laughs> names? Just let's just call them whatever. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, that evening we had the mystery film, which we kept saying to all of us uh, who were uh, hosting it, except for Rob. Uh, none of us knew mm -hmm. what the movie was. And nobody in the chat knew what the movie was until it started. And do you want to explain this mystery film and the experience that of having all nine of us there recording our reactions to it at the same time? <laughs> uh, um, the movie is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's well. I, uh, I would you even call it that? <laughs> I don't even know if I would go that far as to even call it a movie. It's, it's like it's, it's something. Like, uh, <laughs> it's like if Godzilla's Revenge was given a budget of two dollars and you had nobody good working on it. <laughs> so it was so great. <laughs> Okay, so it was, uh, it was, what was it? Um, Jumborg, Ace, and Giants, also yeah, known as Meteor Man? Or uh, Mars Men. Mars, Mars Men. Men. Or, yeah. Mars Men, yeah. Yeah, so Jumborg, Ace, and Giant. It is a Thailand and uh, Japan co production. And then we had the dubbed version which was dubbed by fans who were just trying to dub over it and then put it out which was picked up by the uh, the french distribution company and was like oh yeah this this works and and distributed it as the real dub so it's kind of sort of official <laughs> <laughs> 
And oh boy, <laughs> it opens with a bunch of kids and the kids' voices are just, uh, uh, it's Alvin and the Chipmunks. Mm -hmm. Like it literally was, it was the sound that Alvin and the Chipmunks have because it was just like, they just had people sped up to sound it just a more high pitch and it was so great it was so great <laughs> oh my goodness that movie I, I i never laughed as hard as i did <laughs> during that that movie everyone's reactions to it we had all nine of us on there just reacting at the same time and then at one point later on part way into it uh rob's like oh we have 20 minutes left and everyone <laughs> freaked <laughs> out like they <laughs> lost their minds like what we have 20 minutes of this left <laughs> just everyone <laughs> lost their minds and it was so crazy <laughs> it was so great i loved it <laughs> <laughs> um all of the memes that everybody <laughs> posted in the chat during that some from you some from other people just all the memes were so uh, great uh i just it was it was it was an experience <laughs> it was an experience that we will never forget <laughs> <laughs> oh man so that was kaiju quarantine to trash mountain and for anybody who missed it I feel sorry for you because it was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. But like we said, we're going to do another one uh, at some point. So uh, stay tuned because we're going to be doing more Kaiju Quarantine coming up. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, now we got to shift into regular mode. <laughs> <laughs> So, getting on with the uh, rest of the episode, um, before we get into the news, one other thing that I wanted to do was go over the results for Kaiju Clash, <laughs> which <laughs> is a new segment that uh, me and Michael had introduced in the last episode, uh, where we pit two monsters against each other. We debate on... Uh, who should win in a fight between the two. And then we leave it up to the audience to vote on who should win. So the first ever Kaiju clash was Baragon versus Barugon or Barugon uh, from Gamera. So the results are in. And of course, hashtag justice for Baragon. <laughs> Baragon wins the votes from uh, from everyone. We posted the poll on our Twitter uh, at Kaiju Weekly, and we posted it on the Kaiju Groupie Facebook group. So, if you did not take part in voting on this and you are upset by the results, join us on those. Uh, follow us on Twitter and join the Facebook group, and you will have a chance to maybe uh, change the results for the next. Uh, the next kaiju clash but yeah so uh elijah how do you feel about the results here so i i if i remember right i voted on twitter mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure i voted for baragon so okay. i'm not too upset with this i'm all nice. for it nice now, I, I will say that even though Baragon won, which I think uh, it also comes down to popularity, Baragon is more popular, uh, and, and Toho is more popular than, you know, the Gamera franchise. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that might have come, you know, played a big part in it. Because in the chat on the Facebook group, people were, were adamant that Barugon would win. Uh, Thomas Lee said on the chat that Baragon would definitely be game, but uh, hit with that uh, rainbow death ray would spell defeat. <laughs> Which I mean, yeah, you can't you can't argue with something that's 
called Rainbow Death Ray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just like, oh, man. I love it. I love the Rainbow Death Ray. Um, O'Reilly uh, said on the Facebook group, I was Team Bar- Barugon until I realized that all Barugon has to do is hide underground and wait for it to rain. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, that's something I brought up during the debate. It was It's like, Barugon's weakness is fresh water, so all Barugon has to do is wait for it to rain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then finally, Jesse Wilson uh, said on there, Barugon isn't smart enough to understand the water weakness. The freeze attack and rainbow of death will destroy him. Barugon wins, and he doesn't even have to get close. Uh, so yeah, there was a lot of support for Barugon from the hmm. from the chat, but the votes the votes you know showed that people were more hashtag justice for Barragon than <laughs> than they were for the Rainbow Death Monster. Huh. So that was uh, that was a lot of fun, and uh, so we're not going to do another kaiju clash this episode. We're going to wait until um, the next episode when uh, me and Michael are back. But we just wanted to share those results with all of you. Now we need a hashtag justice for Barugan. Yeah, (laughs) hashtag justice for justice for the rainbow monster. (laughs) (laughs) Justice for rainbow monster. Um, yeah, <laughs> I like Barugon. I, I, I'm not, you know, like I, I chose, you know, Barragon because he's such a big part of my brand now, but I do really <laughs> like Barugon. Yeah. I, I, I definitely think even his movie, I think is one of the stronger show of films and he mm-hmm. is quite interesting shooting a rainbows out of his back. How yeah. can you compete with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just the idea behind that and is is so unique and crazy, and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's the that's the catch up on everything that has to do with the podcast. So, are you ready to actually talk about some real news? I was born ready. <laughs> <laughs> so the first bit of news, um, we had news that numerous classic kaiju films are coming to HBO Max uh, once that uh, service is launched. Included will be the Criterion Showa Godzilla collection, although King Kong vs. Godzilla and All Monsters Attack uh, are not listed in the listing so those might be missing uh king kong from 1933 rodan war of the gargantuas and the x from outer space are also included in in uh the lineup so what are your thoughts on this will this make you sign up for hbo max so and honestly i might just sign up for the snyder cut because that sounds really cool but uh (laughs) you know I'm excited, but I'm also like, it's Criterion stuff. And, you know, the only thing that's new or at least to me exciting would be the international dub for Gargantuas. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm really confused to why All Monsters Attack is not included. That's That was... Yeah. I, I can't figure that out. Yeah, I like I understand King Kong if mm-hmm. there was, you know, rights issues, but I mean then the 1933 King Kong is on there, so I don't understand. Um but but uh yeah, King Kong versus Godzilla I understand, but why all monsters attack of all the movies to not be included? <laughs> why that one? Yeah. That's that's so weird. And such I'm a, a, uh-huh. I, I'm also excited to think that Son of Kong should be on HBO soon. Yeah. That's included with the 33 Kong. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Um, this I'm probably not going to sign up for HBO Max just because I have so many other streaming services that I'm signed up for, and I have to draw a line somewhere. Mm-hmm. I have to draw a line somewhere. But for anyone who likes monster movies... This is this is interesting and it's and it's going to be fun. So if you are someone who doesn't have these movies in your collection and you're not able to watch them on a regular basis, uh, 
this would be a good option for you to do it. And of course, they're going to have, I think they're going to have the legendary uh, monster, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Godzilla movies, the more modern ones on there too. Mm-hmm. So, so I yeah. I think if I remember correctly, they announced that 2014 is included on the day it launches. So maybe we get a new transfer, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Please. Because uh, that. Blu-ray transfer. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Which I I bought it digitally and I watch it mostly digitally. So I've never noticed how dark it was because on the digital the digital release didn't it wasn't that dark. Hmm. But the Blu-ray one, I have seen people like share clips from it, and I'm like, whoa, like mm-hmm. I see why people are complaining. It is so dark. Mm-hmm. So like like not tonally but like dark like you cannot see <laughs> <laughs> what is happening it's like black. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah but no the uh the it's been a while since I watched it digitally um but the digital the the digital version that I purchased when it first came out was not that bad so I don't know what happened. <laughs> Uh, huh. But yeah, so uh, the next bit of news, we have four new MonsterVerse titles that were announced uh, that are leading up to Godzilla vs. Kong. These are comics and books. Uh, so the first one, we have the Godzilla prequel graphic novel, uh, which is going to be told from Godzilla's point of view to help understand his character better. Uh, Kong prequel graphic novel. Uh, and then we're going to have a Kong, uh, a uh, picture book, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong picture book for younger readers. And then we're going to have the book that is the art of Godzilla vs. Kong. So, um, not so we're gonna we're gonna talk about the news about these specifically in just a minute. But just just off of the announcement of those, which one of these are you most excited for, Elijah? You know, I'm a biased person. I'm wearing a Godzilla shirt right now. I'm really <laughs> excited for that point of view from Godzilla, the mm-hmm. prequel. That's yeah. gonna be fun. Yeah, that one seems that one seems the most interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really interested in, it. and I can't remember which uh, one of these or if any of these were the ones that Matt Frank is working on. But I know Matt Frank is working on a legendary property, so for Mm -hmm. godzilla versus kong so yeah that that one seems the most interesting to me too um the kong prequel novel the or prequel graphic novel uh some of the news that we have which i'll get into in just a second makes me interested in it but i'm still i'm with you i'm like i'm biased towards godzilla (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah so the news about that uh we had images that came from that uh, from that book, you know, like some preview images that show Adult Kong. Uh, this was during the Legendary Comics MonsterVerse Publishing panel um, that took place during WonderCon because WonderCon went online and did a WonderCon at home for this year. Uh, and so we see Adult Kong with his beard mm-hmm. confirming hashtag Beardy Kong. <laughs> Beardy Kong confirmed. <laughs> um, and also included in that was images of uh, two Skull Island white tigers that were actually planned to be part of the original Skull Island movie, um, but were taken out of the script early on, so we never got to see them, but they are thrown into this comic book. So... <coughs> So, Elijah, are you excited to see Beardy Kong? I have been waiting to see Beardy Kong. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, me too. Me too. I have been just just waiting for that big bushy beard on (laughs) on King Kong. (laughs) My my boss at my work has a beard. And when the movie comes out, I'm going to start making fun of his beard like Kong did it better or something. (laughs) <laughs> that's gonna be fun <laughs> oh yeah yeah nothing like uh 
you know, bullying your verbally, <laughs> verbally bullying your boss to make your life easier at work. <laughs> oh man. No, that's, that's going to be fun. <laughs> Um, so yeah, r not long after they announced these uh, these MonsterVerse titles, we got the news that that children's book Godzilla vs Kong uh, for young readers. Uh, it's called Godzilla vs Kong. Sometimes friends fight, but they always make up after. I don't, does that it spoil some plot elements from the movie? I don't know. Um, has been delayed until April 6th, 2021. So that was, that was surprising. Mm -hmm. Then we got the news that the official Godzilla vs. Kong art book has been delayed until May 21st of 2021. So, Elijah, what are your thoughts on this delay? <sighs> I don't does like it. It, it scares does, me. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Does it does it spell anything out to you as a possibility for the movie or so, you know, yeah. Here's uh, you brought up the release date, May 21st. Mm -hmm. That's the same day Matrix 4 comes out. Matrix 4 is Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. And I think that almost but confirms it's getting delayed. And yeah, I don't. Uh, they cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, it is important to note that uh, art books sometimes do not come out alongside their film uh at the same time that's not you know it's not always the case but usually nine times out of ten the art books are released the same day that the movie is released mm -hmm. so if the book got delayed to may 21st and like you said that's already a time a a slot that warner brothers has for a film that they could easily switch out, you know, one movie for another. Mm -hmm. It kind of, it kind of, you know, tells us that maybe possibly Godzilla versus Kong is getting delayed again, <laughs> which takes us into our kind of main topic for this week, for this episode, which is Godzilla versus Kong possibly being delayed again. And what that means for, us as fans. Oh, so, do you wanna you wanna uh, get some feelings out? Let's let's talk it out, Elijah. Let's <laughs> let's let's be there for each other and comfort each other <laughs> during this time. <laughs> uh, circle flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, see. I'm worried that this fandom that's already slowly breaking because of this movie is going to shatter with yeah. the announcement. We're delaying it again. Yeah. I mean, I, you you already had fans who were super, super, um, I, I don't know how to even say, rabid. Uh, the last time that they delayed it, mm -hmm. and then you delayed it. If it gets delayed again, it's like you know. And now I, I want to say you know that it is just a small minority of mm -hmm. fans. You know, like we're not we're not talking about the fans, all the fans, because you know there are plenty of fans who are just like, okay, you know, whatever. It's like, oh, it's disappointing, but whatever. But you do have those fans that are like really not taking it very well mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and are expressing that in their own ways on social media. Mm -hmm. So yeah. is there anything that – do you think there's anything that we – as maybe some of the more level-headed uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fans can do to kind of – uh, 
nip this in the bud before it gets out of hand or do you think it just it's just people expressing their frustrations so and see i think we as the as you defined it level-headed fans we need to <laughs> comfort them because this is not a production delay issue this is mm -hmm. strictly they're concerned about theaters opening this year um because mm -hmm. whenever we went into quarantine they were working on the last things in sound design and sound design is the last thing you do in a film they mm -hmm. have like the nature sounds the monster roars and that's solely from a post that uh wingard did on his instagram about sound is all that's left mm -hmm. which means the score is done too so it's not a score issue and you know and by now the cgi's got to be done <laughs> they are the movie was supposed to come out in may and then it got pushed up and my theory is warner brothers pushed it up too much so they delayed it because they were rushing production a bit right uh, so i think for the fans that are going to look at this as the end of the world almost some might uh not everybody just some people uh but it's fine I, this isn't a quality issue this is right. simply warner brothers just being smart now i personally think october is a surefire win if they do it but yeah. you know they they are very scared right now because if gvk d fails Godzilla is done in theaters here in the States with Warner Brothers and Legendary. Yeah. This is a very make or break moment. Yeah. So. And and it really it is it is kind of like that. And it's like that because you know uh King of the Monsters underperformed. Mm -hmm. Secret to a lot of fans um who are in touch with, with the news and stuff. King of the Monsters underperformed. 2014 was not, uh, or didn't, you know, do huge numbers the way that they expected. And so right now, Kong Skull Island is the most, um, is the biggest moneymaker of the three MonsterVerse movies. So they really want this movie to succeed as much as we do. Like they are in probably more. I mean, people at Warner Brothers, Adam Wingard, all of the people who were in the movie, all the ones who, you know, involved in it, they want this movie to succeed more than we do. Mm -hmm. So just I, I it's frustrating, but we have to put into context the fact that we are just fans waiting for a movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like we're we're not we're not we're not the ones who devoted all this work and time and attention and, and, you know, our livelihoods depend on it or our, mm -hmm. you know, success uh, depends on it. Our ability to get more jobs in the future doesn't depend on this movie. We are just fans here to be entertained by a movie. And that movie is coming out later than we expected possibly. Yes. So, I definitely think it's important for us to make sure we put it in the right perspective. Mm -hmm. At the same time, am I disappointed? Absolutely. <laughs> like if, if this is true and it does get delayed again, I'm absolutely disappointed. I'm absolutely frustrated. I'm like, I want to see this movie. I'm yeah. tired of waiting. I want to see it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in thinking about, it will be about a year from now if it gets delayed. Mm -hmm. That is very, I don't want to say disheartening, but it's like we were almost there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like four months left until it comes out. And then they're just going to pull it away from us again. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But, yeah, it it because it was it was like that the last time we it was mm -hmm. we were getting close to November of 
of I think last year when it was supposed to come out, and then all of a sudden they were boom. You know, wait, we're uh, uh, we're moving it to November of this year, mm-hmm. um, and it's like we had to wait an entire year. Now we get close to it again, and like you said, they're going to yank the rug out from under us again, and it's so frustrating. So, so I completely understand why people are frustrated. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge lifelong Godzilla fan. I'm right there with you. I've been frustrated. I am so frustrated with this, but I also do think we still need to keep it in the right perspective. It's just a movie and our lives are not dependent on this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was going to bring up, uh, I, I, I've told this to a few people. <coughs> Godzilla versus Kong. Mm-hmm. is probably the most important Godzilla film we've had in a long time. Mm-hmm. If it fails, that means Godzilla is not as big as it's supposed to be now. Right. Uh, it is the rematch, even though not legally, it is the rematch of the century. Mm-hmm. The original d- was such a huge success. It created the Toho Kaiju Iga of the 60s. Mm-hmm. This needs to do that again. If this fails to do that, then Kaiju films are Look, not making the comeback they should, like we yeah. all think they are. It's going to be a, a devastating blow to the Kaiju genre, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not just here in the States. I, I think it's going to be worldwide because mm-hmm. the United States is such a powerhouse when it comes to um, films and you know other uh, countries make films that try to appeal to an American audience. And if they see that American audiences are not interested in these types of movies, they're going to start changing and moving away from those things. Mm-hmm. And so I think even in Japan, we may see less kaiju films getting uh greenlit Mm -hmm. because of that and you know uh that's why uh srs did the shimpei hayashi uh trilogy rigo raiga all that Mm -hmm. um mill creek getting ultraman that's because godzilla is starting to get popular in the united states again Mm -hmm. um common rider that's because mill creek was doing so well so mm-hmm. we've got Common Rider here now, and according to Arrow, they're going to do more kaiju stuff after Gamera, and Gamera's mm-hmm. getting a new set. So it's like, if GVK fails, all of this that the companies are starting to take and give us is going to stop. It's going to no longer be this every other month Ooh, give me that Ultraman show. I'm going to watch Kamen Rider now on Tokushatsu. Ooh, mm-hmm. an obscure indie to- uh, kaiju film. I'll watch that. That's going to end. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I can see that. I can see where that where you're coming from with that because yeah it, it's it's a it will it will be a devastating blow to mm-hmm. the genre for sure. Um now I don't think it will destroy the kaiju genre i think the kaiju genre you know will still exist in some form but you're right we won't have a lot of the things that we have now because companies are not going to risk it you know we're Mm -hmm. not going to see people take risks on these properties because they know that if godzilla the you know and kong two of the biggest names in the kaiju genre couldn't succeed then why are we going to take a risk on something obscure yeah so yeah it's it's definitely so i so that's why it's scary that's why it's frustrating that's why we're watching this you know and, and that's why i encourage everyone that's like yes we're frustrated yes we're um upset by this if it gets delayed still support the movie don't mm-hmm stop supporting the movie just because that you're getting frustrated by the delays. Um, That also brings up a good question of mainstream audiences, because the reason why movies like 
the Marvel movies succeed and do so well is because it's not because of comic book fans. There's just not enough comic book fans in the world to, to make it succeed by itself. Mm -hmm. They appeal to the mainstream. Yes. And with this delay again, is Godzilla and Kong slipping from the mainstream consciousness? What do you think? <sighs> well, I'll say this. The movie is not. Thankfully, Warner Brothers and Legendary have not marketed it almost at all. Mm -hmm. So the movie, I think, as the movie itself is okay. However, the characters, you know, Kong hasn't been on the big screen since 2017. Mm -hmm. And Godzilla took a five-year break, which in theory, that should have made people want to go see it more. Instead, it underperformed. Mm -hmm. So is giving Godzilla a two-year break a good idea? Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't think it is. I think – because that's – in theory, you know, maybe that's why Marvel is so successful is they keep pushing this stuff out and people keep going to see it. Mm -hmm. But if they were to stop, what's going to happen to that well, audience – you know? Yeah. Well, we'll find out soon because, <laughs> like, right now we're in that period post in game uh, where the, I think this is one of the longest breaks that we've had between Marvel movies mm -hmm. since they first started. So, yeah, we'll find out, you know, with the next wave of Marvel movies if if this break has made it slip through, you know, slip past the the uh, mainstream consciousness. Um, yeah, I, I, and now I do think that once they start marketing the film, they can bring it back to people's mm -hmm. minds and they can keep it in people's minds. But right now, no one outside of the fandom is talking about Godzilla versus Kong. Mm -hmm. Like it, like it's not news, uh, like the, the possibility of it getting delayed. Uh, some of my, uh, podcast friends that do just movie reviews uh, and talk about movie news are not even talking about it because mm -hmm. it's like, well, we're just talking about other movies. You know, we're not, we're not talking about this one because you know, we just don't think about it. Yeah. And that's, that's a little scary. I don't know. See, I'm kind of in that zone where like King of the monsters was over talked. Mm -hmm. And I think Warner Brothers and Legendary taking this spin where they don't reveal a lot, mm -hmm. and it's like very under wraps. It's almost it reminds me of the Endgame marketing. Uh, the only difference was Endgame had enough hype with the general audience that people talked about it still. Mm -hmm. But and if I remember right, the marketing head uh, of Endgame now works for Warner Brothers and. GVK will be one of his first movies he does, which makes me excited. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I yeah, I'm hoping that they, they know what they're doing, that mm -hmm. they can make some smart decisions. Warner brothers hasn't been the best at marketing their movies in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, just, you know, going with the DC movies, they, they're not, they're not always, uh, marketed the best way. Mm -hmm. So, but like you said, there's a new person on you know on the team, so who knows? Who knows? Um, I think the final thoughts on this whole situation is even if it gets delayed again, they're gonna get my money because I'm oh, gonna yeah. go see it. And no I will see it multiple times. <laughs> oh yeah. No matter what, I still plan to see it the Thursday night before Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and probably Monday. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I plan on watching it again and again and again. Yeah. I think uh, with King of the Monsters, I think I saw it nine times in theaters. Oh, wow. And I own 13 copies of it. Oh, wow. Maybe. So, and, you know, it's a joke that I basically own like 25% of the movie with all the money I spent on it. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> But I'll do that with GVK, you know. I'll buy the 
limited edition Best Buy Steelbook, the 4K, the Blu-ray. I'll buy it all. You know, mm -hmm. I even if I don't like the movie, I will support it because I like Godzilla. Yeah. And no matter what, I need to show that I do. Yeah. Yeah, so. and and that that's kind of where I'm at too. It's like even if the movie, even if I don't like the movie, I will probably still see it multiple times. I'll still buy it because I, I love Godzilla. I love Godzilla too much to not to not have something you know Godzilla related uh, and not go and see something Godzilla. Like I'm not the biggest fan of Shin Godzilla. Um, I, I you know I've mentioned that on this podcast before, but I still. Like I bought it, I own it. I went and saw it in theaters when it when it showed here in my local area. I supported that movie because it's Godzilla. Whether mm -hmm. or not you know I enjoyed the film all that much, I, I enjoyed it. Like I'm not saying I hate it. It's it's not at the bottom uh, bottom of my list, but it's not at the top either. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I still support because it it's it's Godzilla and and I you know the anime trilogy. I'm still like, hey, it's Godzilla. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's godzilla so um yeah i'm with you on that so they're gonna get my money and that's the only thing that i have control over really i mean i know mm -hmm. we are podcasters we're on social media we do have some kind of we're not influencers but we do have some kind of um you know audience that we can reach out to and and appeal to but mm -hmm. ultimately, we are responsible for our own money, and that's that's it. That's the only thing we can do. Yep. So we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> Even if it may hurt. Even so. if it may hurt. <laughs> it could be worse. It could be worse. Look at look at uh, New Mutants. Yeah. It could but, be worse. <laughs> you know, isn't that coming out in October? Or August. I think it's August. They moved it to August, but that's like the fourth time they've moved it. So who knows if they <laughs> move again. <laughs> I remember when that trailer first dropped. I don't know how that movie's going to do well. The marketing is just... Yeah. Uh. I, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. That, that movie is... Uh, it's... There's a whole whole thing going on with that movie that's that's <laughs> I don't even want to get into on here. <laughs> we're we're not an X Men podcast. We're we're a we're a kaiju podcast. So yeah, um, but yeah, I I think I think that I think we've said pretty much everything we we're going to say about the the possibilities of Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, getting delayed and we covered as much of the news as I had listed. I know there was a few little minor stories, but I might save those for uh, next week when Michael is back so that me and him have something to talk about. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so we just wanted to do this quick episode um, to just have something. And, and basically we're just still recovering from Kaiju quarantine. <laughs> Like, oh man, that was, it was so much fun, but I didn't, I didn't have a drop of alcohol through the whole thing. I still feel hungover. <laughs> I did this morning. I woke up and, you know, I woke up at like seven and I was like, oh, I'm just going to go back to sleep because I don't feel like it. Yeah. I think <laughs> as soon as we're done recording and all is said and done, I'm probably going to go back to bed too. Cause I, it's just. <laughs> Oh man, it is so. I am so exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun, though. And I want to thank everyone again who came and took part in it and supported us during it. Um, and also thank all of the podcasters who took time out of their schedule to uh, take part in it and be a part of it. So. Uh, yeah, it, it was, it was so much fun and, and we couldn't have done it without, without all of us podcasters coming together and especially Rob from Tokyo mm -hmm. lives who put all of the movies together and the B roll and everything. He put so much work into that. It was so great. Uh, Rob is underappreciated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, 
Yeah, but yeah, so I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and repeat the trivia question that I had for the last week's episode because um, it still applies for the, uh, the next episode. The trivia question that I asked was which Godzilla film caused Universal Studios to file a lawsuit claiming it was too similar to their TV shows, The Six Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman? Uh, so if anybody wants to give us an answer... No matter what the answer is, we'll give you a shout out. You can do that at Kaiju Weekly on Twitter and also Kaiju Weekly, uh, or not Kaiju, Kaiju Groupie on Facebook, the Kaiju Groupie Facebook group. Um, yeah. So I also want to thank Elijah for stepping in and, and being a part of this and, and uh, helping me through the, the, the turmoil that, <laughs> that we have of the possibility <laughs> of not getting Godzilla versus Kong for another year. Well, thanks for having me on <laughs> much appreciated. Yeah. And we have you on the schedule to show up on an, on a future episode. So this is not the last time that our audiences will hear Elijah. So uh, let us know now, if you didn't enjoy having him on here. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, do you want to give plugs to your stuff? I know that you've taken a break from your podcast, but you're planning on, uh, starting it back up soon. So do you want to plug anything? Certainly. Uh, well, um, let me pull up my little thing here. Okay. Uh, no, I'll just wing it actually. Uh, I am a host of Kaiju Conversation, a podcast much similar to Travis's, but not as good uh, clearly, <laughs> uh. Um, we are bi-weekly we have a twitter at kaiju underscore converse we just joined instagram uh, uh, we have a facebook page that I even forget we have sometimes <laughs> <laughs> uh, a youtube channel all that fun stuff you can find it by just looking up kaiju conversation uh, you know a lot of relaxing and talking like travis said we're on a little bit of a hiatus but hopefully here in the very new near future that will change i'm um, very excited to get back into this because like stuff like today talking to travis here was a lot of fun it's yeah. always enjoyable yeah yeah i know when i took a hiatus from from kaiju weekly uh between like 2018 to 2019, I was, I, I was like, man, I just, I want to do it again. Cause that was so much fun. And so as soon as I had the opportunity to, I started doing it again. Cause I was like, eh, it's so much fun. It's so <laughs> much fun to do this. Um, but yeah, we're so glad that you uh, were on here and I will put links to all of your stuff in the description of this episode so that people can check out your things and uh you also do you also do some great um uh figure uh photographs too oh, thank you uh i forgot about that <laughs> yeah i see i see that um every so often on on uh social media so i'm like oh they they look really good thank you i'm kind of trying to get into that i've got quite a few photos in my back catalog i'm going to post soon Okay. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. I, I, I think that's interesting that people, when people do that, that's really neat. Uh, as someone who's not a collector who doesn't have a lot of figures to photograph, I think it's really neat when, when people do that. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to, I'm going to close out the episode. I'm going to say thank you to everyone for listening. Uh, even with this weird kind of only news uh, episode uh, th where we didn't review anything. Uh, thank you for listening to it. And if you want to follow the podcast, you can do that on social media. Uh, we are at Kaiju Weekly on Twitter and at Kaiju Weekly Pod on Instagram. You can send questions, comments, or answers to the trivia questions to our email, kaijuweekly at gmail.com. You can also find us at the Kaiju Groupie Facebook group. Uh, that is a Facebook group that was started by Michael, and he is the admin there. So uh, it's a fun place for kaiju fans to just talk about all kinds of things. Um, and there's not a lot of the negativity or toxicity that you get from other Facebook groups. Um, also, follow Michael at Kaiju Groupie 54 on Twitter and the Kaiju Groupie on Instagram. 
And we're also going to say a big thank you to Brian Shijir and Thorax, our Patreons, for supporting us on Patreon. You can also support the podcast if you're able to at patreon.com forward slash Kaiju Weekly Pod. And yeah, I think that's going to do it for this week's episode. So to close out the episode, I might say help control the giant monster population. Uh, actually, no. No, this time around, we don't want to help control the population. We want more giant monsters. <laughs> so so spread the giant monster population. Uh, uh, breed your giant monsters as much as possible. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. <laughs> we will see you later, uh, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>